Previously on Kepler Electronics. Even though its last match would be a loss, I'm incredibly happy about how this robot performed. Well, that didn't happen. This is my team's robot as it stood after state. The plan was to take the double catapult to both the US Open and Worlds, but plans changed. The catapult suddenly broke about two weeks before the US Open, and we decided to abandon the catapult in favor of Old Faithful, the double flywheel. However, modifications needed to be made to improve the reliability of the machine. The first step was to remove the absolute disaster that was the intake axle mount. As stated previously, the flywheel setup was mounted at a strange angle, so that necessitated a bent axle without a bearing to prevent the chain from falling off. This has been replaced with an entirely new system, which manages to both avoid a bent axle and incorporate a bearing flat. This did necessitate removing the standoff in the middle of the intake, as it would prevent caps from being flipped due to the new position it would have to be mounted in. This isn't a huge problem, but a ball will still sometimes escape, but maybe only 1 in 50 to 100 times. Speaking of the intake, these extra pieces were added to help center the ball more, as the ball would sometimes get stuck at one side. With the reworking of the intake axle support, this allowed us to really beef up the support on either side of the flywheel, so we took that opportunity and added these pieces of C-channel on either side. This eliminated the slight tilt that plagued the robot before, helping it shoot much straighter. One small thing that we added was a small bracket to the end of the D-score to try and hit the highest caps. I don't think we ever actually use this in competition, but it's nice to have the option. One big quality of life addition was moving the battery from underneath the bot to this assembly on the side. This made the battery much easier to replace, as the robot didn't need to be tilted backwards to do so, but it made plugging in the programming cable a lot more difficult. The final and most noticeable addition was the ball guard. The old standoff method of preventing balls from getting in wasn't as effective as we wanted it to be, so we added this hinged monstrosity. It uses a small piece of aluminum strip as a latch to keep it closed, and everything besides the latch and hinge is painted with black Krylon specialty lacquer. This worked extremely well, and held up through lots of practice and the entirety of the US Open with little wear. There is a bit of chipping in a couple of places, namely where caps rub against it when we push them, but I think it's pretty good overall. Adding a clear coat probably would have improved this a lot, but I didn't have time to get that applied before the competition. And that's how we took the bot to the US Open. We ended up placing 7th in our division, going 8-2 and two in qualification. We played against some friends from our region in the round of 16 before being knocked out in quarterfinals due to our intake chain snapping. Overall, I'm really happy with how this robot performed at the Open, but that's not where this story ends. While preparing for Worlds, we went back and forth on whether or not to take this robot or the Catapult, ultimately deciding to take the Catapult, but not before making some cool mods to the flywheel. The first modification we made was replacing the old flywheel design with these new ones, which used tied rubber bands instead of zip ties to hold on the non-slip mat, which gives a more consistent and more powerful shot. This did change all of the angles for shots, but it was a great benefit for Autonomous, as we can make longer shots more accurately. The second modification we made was to add a chain tensioner that moved the intake chain back more into the robot, which made it less likely for another robot to snap the intake chain. It looks very tight, but the intake spins very freely. So that's my team's double flywheel, also known as Butternut Squash. It proved to be a powerful and reliable bot throughout the early season and into the late season. This video is coming out a bit late, but I think it helps show a bit more of the process we went through trying to improve our robot procedurally. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see the reveal video we made for the catapult we took for worlds, click here. And if you want to see the first part of my new combat robot build, a small one pound drum robot named Blastwave, click here. Thanks for watching, keep designing, and D-Row for GDC.